everybody. Welcome to challenge number five. And we are going, it is five, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are going to organize your coloring things today. All the things that you add color to all your things with. It's our mission today to get those organized and cataloged. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with my PowerPoint here. So I'm going to read the winners off another screen if I can find the other screen. And then I'm going to put my glasses back on. How about that? Oh. Okay, so if you're new, if you're just jumping in now, um, the previous videos are posted on the Get Organized Challenge page on our website. So you, after what we're going to talk about today kind of builds off everything that we've talked about in the past. So you may need to go back and watch those videos if you're new. Also, if you're new, <coughs> you can add, if you have a question, you can type the word QUESTION in, in all caps, and Karen is monitoring the broadcast downstairs, and she'll do her best to answer those questions. At the end of class, in some places we're a few seconds ahead, in some places we're up to a minute and a half ahead. So if it gets to the end of class and you haven't, your question hasn't been answered and we're signing off, that's because it went through the delay process, we didn't get your question. You can email questions to us, customer service at totally-tiffany.com, or you can go to the Facebook group and post a question there and we'll get to you and get those questions answered. Um, all of the videos get posted on the Get Organized Challenge page of our website a little bit later in the day, so you can always re-watch there as well. All right, so one of the things you need to do is at the end of each week, you need to put up a progress post, and then you get into a drawing where you can win a prize. And this week's winners are Lori J. Patterson, and she said <coughs> she has been a stamp cataloging fool. Over 452 stamps she cataloged this week. So way to go, Lori. And if you're on the Facebook group, I hope you'll read her post because she does give some good tips and tricks for the process that she went through as well as um, showing some images of her uh, catalog. And then our second winner is Caroline Core, if I'm pronouncing her last name right. Um, she says she scanned all my stamps, an entire bookcase of them. Woo! You guys were busy, busy, busy this week. 90% um, of my embossing folders swatched and sorted. My punches were already sorted and displayed on the wall. Won't be done with this challenge by tomorrow, but I'm well underway. So way to go, everybody, uh, for all the hard work this week. All right, let's jump right into challenge number five, color your world. Um, so it's our goal in this challenge to, <coughs> excuse me, it's our goal in this challenge to get all of the things that you have together and cataloged and organized. And um, biggest challenges here are that there's so many different shapes and sizes of things as well as different ways that things are used. So we're going to do our best to pull all those things together. There are going to be tons of different ways to store these items. And so I want to lead you back to that same question that I'm constantly bringing up, or questions, I guess. Where do you craft? When do you craft? Who do you craft with? Right? Before you choose the right tools for organizing your inks, chalks, pens, you need to keep that in mind. If you're somebody who always crafts at home, you're going to use something that's more stationary, like what I've got here. If you're somebody that always travels, you need a bag that you're going to be able to travel with those pens or markers or glitter. So keep that in mind as you're deciding what types of tools to use. I'll show you a few of them in class today, and um, that a few that we offer and, and who I think they work well for um, at the very end of class. All right. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is gather all of your products together. And I'm going to encourage you to kind of gather them together by brand. And um, <coughs> the reason for that is as we catalog things, if you like things brand specific, um, you'll be ready to do that brand specific. If you need to replace things, if things are dried out, it's easier if you're shopping online to go through everything from Tombow or everything from Stampin' Up or whatever it is. So bring all those products together, sort them by brand. This is for God a lot. If you're God a little, then it doesn't matter because you're not gonna have a hundred different colors of stickles, glitter, glue, right? And we'll talk a little bit about God a littles and the options for their storage as well. Um, sorry, I got it clicked to my next screen here. Um, then we are going to create a color catalog. I know that's a shocker to all of you after we've been creating catalogs, but a color catalog is going to be absolutely as vital to you 
as the catalog for your stamps or your punches or your dies, right? And there's a couple of benefits that come with creating the catalog. Um, and one of them is you find out how many duplicates you have of the exact same Tim Holtz ink pad or paint bottle or whatever it is. <coughs> but you also get to try, sorry, I have to make this bigger. Hang with me a minute, ladies. Let's see. Now I can read it without my glasses. All right. So as we're creating catalogs, right, here's an example page from one of my catalogs. This is the very first one that I did. The, these are blues. <coughs> you can make your catalog on any size paper that you want. I usually keep this in a super size single in the catalog section of my scrap rack. I pulled it out of there for class today. But you can see that I've got markers and glitter and paints and inks all on the same page. Now, this paper actually came out of a uh, paper stack that I bought called Blacks and Whites that I thought, oh, this is so cool. I'm going to use it all the time. And um, I used like three sheets out of the however many were in the stack. But luckily, they're white, plain white on one side. So I'm using them to create all my catalog sheets. So you can see here's the different, all the different black and white patterns that I never used, but I had good intentions. So that might be a good use for paper, ugly paper that you've got. If it's white on one side, it might be great catalog paper. So you're going to create that color catalog. If you are uh, particular to a brand, you might want to create a catalogs, catalogs by brand as well. And there are some shortcuts on the internet for doing that. And a lot of them get posted up on our Get Organized Challenge group, right? The links and such to the, um, to the manufacturer. So we'll, we'll go through that when I start talking about cataloging in just a minute. Okay, let's talk quickly about how you're going to store the products that you catalog. So depending on what type of crafter you are, that's how you're going to choose the products that you want. So if you're a if you're a got a little, you may be able to simply create um, a catalog page of all the particular colors. So this is just an eight and a half by eleven sheet of white cardstock, and it relates to everything that's in here. So this is all obviously reds and pinks. So if you are a got a little and you don't have tons of colors, you just need a container, and then you can put everything together by color. I used to do this in our five drawer stash and store box. So um, but I could do a whole color in each drawer, right? Um, now I have too much stuff to do that. So, um, but it's a possibility and you could do red, orange, yellow, green, blue and have the five drawers there. So if you're using cube storage, that might work for you. So you might be storing everything by color um, or type, this is all paint, right? And you're going to decide how, how you want to do that as we go through the process. All right. Um, got a little store by color. Okay, so let's talk about making that catalog. Working through your colors, whatever they are, so, um, and then indicating where you have them stored. So if I look, if I say, oh, I want this bright blue paint, I can look at my catalog and go, okay, that blue paint is in drawer number 18. I can go right over here to this drawer that's labeled drawer number 18, and there are those blue paints right there, right? So it's really easy to find whatever it is that I'm looking for. So just like we cataloged everything else, you are going to make a representation of that color and then you are going to tell yourself where you stored that particular color, right? And again, you can do multiple just like we did with, um, with the other products. Maybe you have, you have all the Tim Holtz products and color products as well. So you might have a color page that has the Tim Holtz colors and then also a Tim Holtz page that has all the different Tim Holtz products that you have. Um, if you want to uh, catalog those by color as well. So these are great big color sheets. This is what I started with, as I mentioned. And then I got this great idea. Well, I'm going to backtrack, right? You guys are used to that. Sorry. 
I, I mentioned briefly about there being charts on the internet um, or but manufacturers. So if you collect a particular manufacturer, this is the Copic marker uh, printable. And <clears throat> It has a little box for all the Copic marker colors, and as you buy them, you can color in the box, and then you know which color you're missing, right? So a lot of manufacturers do something like this. This is the Memento ink chart, Tim Holtz Distress inks, Tim Holtz Distress stickles, regular stickles, right? So the thing with stickles and other stuff too, like Nubo dots, drops, um, anything like that, is that they are different colors on black than they are on white. So someone suggested way back when we first started to add this black line, which I did with construction paper, and now I could tell which was what, what stickles would look like on light and on dark, and that worked really well. And then I thought, well, can I just print that in an Excel document and um, then I could do light, I could just make this line dark and so I could do light and dark again, right? So that led me to create what we call are the Pika Hue color charts and there are three of them and these are downloadable and printable right off our website. So this one is called Glitter Glue and it has the big um, black line. Now what we discovered last challenge or the challenge before is that some glitter glues make the um, make the toner on your page run and it changes the color on them dramatically right so you look at it and you go wow that's dramatically different on dark but really what it's doing is making the um, color from the toner bleed so just something to keep in mind. They don't all do that, just some of them do that. But So we have one for stickles, a Pika Hue color chart. These are all on the Get Organized Challenge page on the website. You can just print them off there. Um, this is the, and they're um, PDFs. So these, are, these were created in Excel, but they're PDFs. So if you don't have Excel, you can still print them. Um, this is for pens. And this one is what I call big boxes. <coughs> It's constantly evolution for me, right? The big boxes is what I prefer to use for everything now. Um, so you can see, here's my color catalog for green. Right? These are these are new. I just started working on these new catalogs, right? Okay. Here's the big box for red. This one I've got a lot more done on. But now I've got glitter glues and paints and inks and nouveau drops and everything all on just one page. And each indicator. The little, the little words next to it tell me where that's stored. Now, one of the things, especially with um, things like glitter glues and Nuvo drops, is that so, so many of them look similar in the bottle. So what I did was <laughs> I wrote on my bottles. So this is called Apple Green Nuvo drops. I just I wrote it on the top. It's on the label. But when you're trying to grab something off the shelf and there's three or four colors that all look the same, make it as easy as possible on yourself. So I, a lot of the bottles behind me are all labeled at the top. Some of them don't have names, in which case I just created names for them and wrote them on the top so that I could easily find them. So things like Nuvo Drops, Glitter Glues, Reinkers, these are all little small items right there all the dimensionally and so I have mine stored right behind me in this is our the six level um, stamp and supply stadium right so it fits wood mounted stamps but it's great for things like stickles and reinkers and nouveau drops and that's what I've got back here the other nice thing about it is mine is arranged by color. Some of it's missing. Actually, a lot of things are missing out of my room right now because we're in show season. And so a lot of stuff is packed up in the trailer headed for the next trade show that we're doing. So I don't quite have as many things to show you as I normally would. But um, they're arranged by color. So one of the cool things about that is because there's no dividers between each bottle, if I get another blue and it should be, and I want to put it in, you know, right next to greens, I can just shift everything over and up or over and down to work that color in, right? 
So when you're dealing with something that has segments for each individual container or component, you have to move every single thing in the container. So anytime you can choose things where you can just slide things over, instead of having to move everything, it's going to be easier to work with. Same thing with um, pens and markers. All right, so creating your col color catalog, and I actually did two as I went along. So this is all glitter glues. And um, like this is all green. So there's, they're both represented there. But if I want to see all the glitter glues together, all the choices that I have, um, I can do that. Now, these are designed so that you can fold them in half. Let me find one that's not quite so bulky. We'll do this one because it's already. So they have this little line down the middle that says fold. So you can just fold it in half. And then you can hole punch through each square. And why would you want to do that, pray tell? Because if you're trying to match an ink or a pen or a glitter glue to a particular color of paper, you can take that color of paper and put it behind there, and then you can see through to know, oh, yeah, that, well, none of these look good with this orange, but... But you, whether you're trying to match something exactly or you're trying to get a good contrast, now you're able to put that color behind and you can see, does that ink or that glitter glue, is that perfect for my project? All of us have created a project where um, we thought, oh, this is the perfect color. And then you, you start into your project with that color marker or ink and find out that is not the perfect color, right? So you have to create some element to go over the top of it or start again or whatever. So this is going to make it easy for you to find to match up the colors that you want. And you can do the same thing just with the, with the other color sheets. Oh, I want to use a green with this red. No, this top one. Let's see. So you can put that other color behind it. Well, you guys probably can't see on the camera anyway. And see, how are those two things going to look together, right? So not only can you use it on projects, uh, you can use it with each other to find inks or chalks or pens or glitter glues that all are going to work together. So the Pika Hue color charts are what I'm changing over to for all of my um, color cataloging, right? So slowly but surely, I'm working through that. I did get through all the stuff that was on the shelf behind me and most of my Spectrum Noir markers, which is what I've got kind of right here in the big squares as well, right? So again, the Spectrum Noir markers are going to drive me back to where those are right here. One of the things, I think I mentioned this before, that I love about these Spectrum markers is they have a color code at the end. So I can write that color code right on my chart and know exactly what color I'm getting, right? Um, if you don't have, if you're using a brand of marker that doesn't have the label on the tip, and especially with double tip markers, which we're trying to keep laying flat for storage, um, then it's a little bit more difficult to find exactly the pen you want because you, the name of the pen or the number of the pen is generally on the side. There's a couple of ways to combat that. You can make an insert that looks something like this right that gives you all the colors and then you can write the color name so this this is actually doesn't have the color name because these are um, Copics which also have a code at the end but if you color a card like this and set it on your tray now the gal who came up with this idea what she actually did was she folded it over like this in her pen and ink palace right and then she put it under the pens. I'm going to show you. It'll make more sense. So what I've got here are two pen and ink palaces double stacked. Um, I pull my things out of here constantly because they are like everything else and they become things that I'm demonstrating with or as I'm traveling around. But she, um, oh, I didn't fold it short enough. But sh this is what going to pull these out so you can get a better idea. I thought this was really a great idea, actually. How does that look, Leanne? I can't actually see it. But So now you have the example of the color, and you know where to put the colors back in as you take them out, right? So she did her whole thing across. Um, <coughs> 
Her name is Jennifer. Shoot, I will get a link out. She put up a blog post though about how how she labeled the things in her um, pen and ink palace, right? So if you have something with the tips at the end, that's great. If you have to write the color, if you have to um, know what the colors are, you might have. If you don't have the the label at the end, it's a little bit more difficult because you have to pull the pen out and look at it. Personally, um, I don't want to sound like. I'm anti any particular brand, but it's so much easier when the numbers are at the end of the pens that I I am pro I will probably not buy markers anymore that don't have that. Now I folded this too long, so I have to take it out of there. Look at me, I'm just making a huge mess here. All right, I'm just going to move this out of the way for the moment. Okay, this is why my things are always kind of messy because I'm constantly pulling things out and I'm going to have to rearrange them. But I'll go back to, as I'm talking about rearranging these, back to the comment I made about using something like this where you could slide things. I just put all those pens in there, right? Some of them are going to be in the wrong place. If I had individual slots for each pen, I would have to take all the pens out and move all the pens over. But because the slots are, um, because there aren't any slots, I can just put things in order easily by just moving them back. I don't have my glasses on, so I'm not sure that these are in order, but I'm just going by the colors. Oops. Right? So I can put them into order pretty easily by just moving them around that way. All right. So. I used, I, and I had a question about this, some of the Pika Hue charts I used a bigger hole punch. Um, I had one that was a triangle that people really liked, and I don't know, where's my sample of that? Yeah, I don't have it. Uh, this is a square punch, right, at the bottom of this one. Or I just punch the holes in it. You're going to use the same technique if you're using a square punch as if you were using just a regular hole punch like I used on this. You're just going to fold it over and put the punch on, right? Now, this is a good time to put your punch upside down so you can make sure that you're lining it up. Do I have a punch right here somewhere? Uh, of course I don't. So, I, I put my... Hang on. Hang on. This is a different shape, a rectangle, right? But if I put my, if I put this in this way, upside down, I can see to line it. This is too big for this. The shape of this is too big. But if I put it in upside down, I can see to line it up with the square, right? So generally what I do is I'm going to put my punch like this, and then I'm just going to push it down from here, right? And then I have, I'm going to be able be able to have it lined up in the square. This this punch is a little bit too big. That's not what I'd be using, but I just wanted to show you how, how to do it upside down so you can line it up. It's easier even, this, this one I have folded backwards, if you want to get a better view of the lines, right, and then when you put your punch in, you know exactly that it's lined up, so you can punch that hole. So you can use a regular punch, or you can just use your crocodile, which is what I did with this one, fold it in half, and just use the circle punch to get that hole. The bigger hole is is nice when you're comparing for colors. I mean, you can see you get so much more color than you do if you're just using a small round punch on that. All right. Um, there are, um, a, there's a new page on our website called We've Got an Organizer for that. You can find it by going to the shop page and if you click on the thing that says shop by type of product you want to organize, when you click on that, it's going to take you to a series of boxes, glitter glues, inks. When you click on inks, ink pads, it's going to take you to, do you want to talk about Tim Holtz? Do you want to talk about Stampin' Up! or Close to My Heart or Quick Quotes? And it'll show you all the different products we make that work for each individual one of those products. So. Um, and there are just, there are so many products that going through each 
in every product is a little bit difficult, but that page on our website, which we'll get a link up to, um, you can really look at the things that are appropriate to you. So if you're trying to organize markers, and if I'm a stay-at-home marker girl, I'm going to use something like this. If I'm a travel marker girl, I'm going to use something like this, right? So I can take this with me. Um, I can still store it flat, but when I'm at an event, now we make two of these. One is called Terry and one is called Deborah. Deborah is a little bit shorter. Terry is going to be for your longer markers like Tombow and that type of thing. One of the things, that, nice things about the website is there's tons of pictures on the website of all of the products in use. So you can get a good idea of the supplies that you have and how they might work. Um, all right. So now as you're cataloging, you want to do the same thing we've done before. So this is a Gale bag with paints in it. And it's got um, eight paints in there. It's labeled paints one through eight. The colors, I just wrote a number on the lid of the paint, and then I can incorporate it into my catalog, and my notation would be Gale Bag 1 or GB1 or whatever you're going to call it um, to drive me to that product to find exactly what I want. So depending on um, the type, again, of crafter that you are, maybe you want to store everything by color. So this is glitters and glitter glues and micro beads that are all in the gold metallic family and they're just all together in a Teresa bag, right? So, got a littles uh, are more likely to be storing things by colors. If you have a lot, you probably need um, to store things by brand, by shape, and then create that catalog to go along with everything else. All right, we're at the this week's challenge already. So if you have questions and you haven't asked them, uh, now is the time. Also, um, Karen gave me a winner to announce from yesterday, and I'm assuming it is the um, Pick Me winner. So yesterday we released our new Kiwi Lane products, and um, whenever we do a live um, release, well, not whenever, we just started doing it actually, we did this thing called Pick Me, where you can email in with just Pick Me in the um, in the subject line of your email of the email, and then um, Leanne throws all of those into a drawing and picks someone, and we give away prizes that way. So yesterday's Pick Me winner for the uh, live event for a Kiwi Lane is Becky Brozier. So Becky, if you're watching today, um, you are the winner of yesterday's Kiwi Lane. Uh, collection, new product collection. All right, I don't hear Karen coming up the stairs with any questions, so um, let's go through this week's challenge. What do you need to do this week? You need to decide what kind of tools you're going to use. Are you a got a little who could easily store things together by color, right? Are you going to put them in something like this? Are you going to put them in a drawer system or some other sort of tool where you can get to them where you can see things quickly and easily. So that's going to be your first choice. If you are a Gloria God a lot, then you have to figure out how am I going to store my, my whatever it is, whether it's stickles or paint or re-inkers, any of those type of things. Do you have space where you can have everything out and accessible because that's always the best use of things? Or do you need to pack things away and then bring them to your workspace? These are all the questions you need to ask before you decide what kind of tools am I going to use to store my coloring supplies. Um, I will say, this guy, the Pen and Ink Palace, we have available on our website in this size. It's only nine inches across. Um, we will have the bigger version, the 15 inch version, available um, around the first week of March, available on our website. Uh, the 15 inch version of this product is available now on HSN, Home Shopping Network. So if you have tons of markers, this I, I didn't sh show with ink pads, but it also, because the trays in it are flat, I have three of them up here. Right? Um, you can put your ink pads on here and then slide it in. Again, if you look at the ink pad page on the website, 
um, you will see this product and the 15 inch version of it in use with those, those multiple ink pads. So a lot of people storing ink pads by color or designer, I'm sorry, by designer or brand. Um, the 15 inch is a great choice for them. If you don't have a ton of inks, um, maybe the nine inch is good for you. Also, you can store your markers next to the ink pads that they match. All right, so that's your first thing. What are you gonna do for storage tools? Figure that out. Then you wanna gather everything together by, and group them together by manufacturer. And this could include if you have, um, if you have Stampin' Up! inks and Stampin' Up! re-inkers and um, Stampin' Up! markers, you want to put you don't want to put you want to put all those things together initially, and then so Stampin' Up markers aren't going to probably fit in the same place that Stampin' Up ink pads do, or the reinkers for that matter. But you want to know I have the marker and the ink pad and the reinker, and you want to get all that stuff into your catalog so that later when your ink pad starts to dry out, you can be like, do I have that reinker? Yes, I do, based on your catalog, and then you can go and find it. So put all those things together when you're doing your catalog um, so that you know what you've got and what coordinates as well. All right. Um, and then you're going to create your catalog sheets by color and possibly by brand if that's if you have a lot or you like a particular brand or you want to know which brand things are. <coughs> Your goal this week is to sort three containers of coloring things. So whether that's markers or ink pads or glitter glues, whatever you've got to get that sorted and cataloged. Post your progress so you can get in the drawing for the prize. And then enjoy your reward, ladies. Um, you're, it's so much beneficial. I know I harp on this every week, but the whole idea behind choosing a reward is that you then take that reward and it makes your brain happy and it keeps you motivated and inspired to keep moving forward and keep doing more each week. All right. Um, I think that's it. I guess I should say the stash and store boxes, these guys, the drawer boxes, the five drawer box is available at Joanne. Uh, the, uh, the other, all three of them are currently available at Hobby Lobby, but they're going to put something else in place of those. So there was a little post that said these were on sale at Hobby Lobby on clearance. So if there's a Hobby Lobby near you and you want stash and store boxes, you can, obviously you can order them from us, but Hobby Lobby has them on sale right now. Um, and again, Joanne has the five drawer you got to love that 40 off coupon and no shipping. So if you are one of the 500, if you live near one of the 500 Joanne stores that carries our product, you can get that there as well. Just a little side note about Joanne. They're adding a bunch of new products or more, not necessarily new to you or new to us, but new to Joanne um, in April. So I know a lot of you had said, wow, Joanne carries the same thing they've always carried. When are they going to add more stuff? Um, all that's coming in April, so watch for a new planogram coming up in the Joanne store in April. All right, uh, I think that covers it for the week. So everybody get busy, get colorful. I'm looking forward to seeing your color catalogs posted and all the bright and sparkly things that you have in your collection. Oh, one thing I just wanted to talk about. I know, I have all these out. Why do I have them? Because I just want to show you, don't just um, assume that everything is good to go. This is a brand new bottle of green paint. Right? It's unopened. It still has the factory seal on it. So this belongs in the garbage. Right? Don't keep this. If you uh, try to do some, if your paint sounds like that, it's time to throw it away. This is a glitter glue also totally frozen up in the bottle, solid, right? Um, so my point is, I guess, one of, the, one of the benefits of doing this is that you actually open and test everything. I have a whole set of Sharpie markers. I bought them all at the same time. These two, for some reason, are dried out. So when I was doing my color catalog and I went to draw with these two, they don't work anymore. The whole rest of the set does. Very strange. Caps were on. I don't know. But my point is, Test everything, and then when it doesn't work, throw it away. Okay, I'm keeping these so that I can show them at the next class as well. But unless you're teaching a class on how to organize your color stuff, throw your things like this away. All right, that's it, everybody. Get busy, and oh, I won't be here next week. <coughs>
Karen is going to be your guest teacher next week for the photos class, which I don't have to tell you is her favorite. All right, take care, and I will see you in